today, um, but I am in the middle adjusting. Let me know if you guys can hear me, see me. Drop a one in the comments if you can hear me and see me. I know the internet is tripping. So anyways, you guys put a one in the comments if you can hear me and see me. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to hit a couple different points today. Uh, and if you haven't watched David Bet from Value Entertainment's webinar on the next two to five years, I strongly suggest you do one. I'm going to do a webinar on it probably in like two weeks or less or like next weekend when I get back. Can y'all hear me? Put a one in the comments. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Put a one in the comments. If you can't see me, let me know. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, several topics, but this is the first one. Someone in the post and it went viral on Twitter. And again, I'm not on Twitter, you guys. I literally deactivated my page. I just get the snippets people literally screenshot and put on Instagram. So I use it from there. And a black business owner, apparently they haven't been in business for two years. They made all this money and, and they asked their white friend. They say it's associate, but it's, it's a friend to go ask the bank, could they invest in this business with the financials? So they take the financials into the bank and they go, oh, yes, we'll give you a hundred. We can give you one hundred twenty thousand dollars to invest in this business. Right. I think they said the wording is to invest or buy it out. My 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 the mountain air was wearing me out, John. It's wearing me out bad. Uh, we were super dehydrated. We climbed several little ele high elevation places yesterday. So. So anyway, so then this same person goes to that same bank and they say, oh, man, we just can't approve you. You got to come back after you have two years. Well, again, if you guys know, this has been historically documented, like they do foul stuff at the banks all the time. Oh, yeah, you need two years. You need this. But if you're just a W-2 employee making 40 a year, they'll give you half a million dollar house loan if you got the right down payment. Right. And so I want you guys to understand that we have a world built for W-2. Right. And we have a world built for investors. So when when it was his it's his business, hey, I need a loan. Oh, you got to come back when it's two years. When it's someone wanting to invest in this business or buy this business, oh, here's a twenty a hundred twenty thousand. Now I'm not going to just say it's a black or white issue. There is some that play into that, but I think it's a documentation issue. If you guys saw how I did the funding course, a lot of people in the course are like, hey, I want more personal stuff. This is mostly business, and I'm like, this is a business channel, and I'm trying to show you how to work around a world that essentially doesn't care. If you get the financing you need, if you get the money you need, um, I've been blessed to do good paperwork as many years as possible. Um, I've been, you know, I, I'm a very stubborn person. If you know, don't know that already, I will go ask 40, 50 different banks. You know, I'll go see how many, like I've been at different people's funding courses and different people's fun launch. And this is why there's such a big push for people to have credit cards and private loans because how banking has been very biased. Now, I'm going to tell you what's already wrong in the premise, and I didn't want to get into this big back and forth on Instagram. That's especially why I'm not on Twitter anymore. The fact remains, if this person is making such crazy sales in their business, the first thing I'm going to say is, why, do, why don't they have a Stripe loan? Why don't they have a PayPal loan? Who is their merchant processor? Like, there's so many steps to this that they should already have access to $120,000, okay? Uh, a lot of time... A lot of times people really get tough with me on issues when I, I can show you data and I can show you the real world data on the street. You dig what I'm saying? A lot of people want to tussle with me and I get it. But I'm telling you, in order to get some of this financing, you can't just go, well, here's my paperwork. Thank you. No, you have to really kind of uh, look at all the layers of financing and getting income. Uh, you know, when you when I sit here and I have to argue with people about signing up for QuickBooks and QuickBooks is giving loans and Stripe is giving loans and PayPal is giving loans and FinTech basically during the PPP issue were the number one provider of PPP because they realized they could move faster. They could call people. They could vet people. These big banks had no desire to do the PPP. They had no desire to call people. They had no desire to vet people. And so when the government realized that, they let a lot of FinTech step up. And that's the difference is. If you're going to start a business in 2022 or a year or two ago and act like you don't have to, uh, you know, learn, keep up to date on who can provide you funding, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. And so even even in the scenario that they mentioned, I mean, what's the interest rate to give your friend 
if they're going to get approved for 120,000, hey, can you give them 15% returns on their money for a year? Two years, three years, four years, next five years for your business to grow? Can you give them 20% returns? What can you give them to uh, make this money work? And this is why private money is so strong in our economy. And this is why hard money lenders can charge interest like they do, because we all know the banking system has been messed up for years. Years. I remember one time I went somewhere and I had, I think it showed on my bank statement that I made $50,000 in my business in a month. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, um, like he couldn't, he, he was like, well, the provider, and it wasn't the credit score, it wasn't anything. He he literally was scrambling for words. He's like, you know, we set up everything for W-2s, and so you don't have a W-2. And I was like, dude, I just made 50K a month. And he looked so nervous, like he didn't know how to say, I can't get this loan approved, or I don't know how to get this loan approved. Right. Or I would go to banks. And they say, well, are you a media company? Are you education? What are you? Right. This is why I talk so much about NACA codes. And this is why when no matter no matter what people say about me on the Internet or anywhere, you guys will ever look up on me. I've done I've done so much for the community and just so much for Internet, period, as far as teaching people what is the barriers out there. This NACA code bullcrap, this classification bullcrap. A lot of the stuff they're trying to pull, we can get around it, right? A lot of people are complaining about funding, but a lot of stuff you can get around. I literally went in Jeff Seconder's group, 0% Finance, and there were countless immigrants coming in here, right? Coming in here who were getting 100000 200000 in credit cards. Yet you live in America and you want to fight a credit system, uh, you know, or if you play around with it enough, you should be able to get that. But let's say you don't want to play around with credit. If you have a business that's making income, that's actually generating income, and you have the documentation, and you have the QuickBooks, you have the P&L, you have the balance sheet, you have these things set up, there are private investors who will invest in you. There are people who make it right. I literally bought a piece of land, and I start trying to apply for the permits and the different things. And a company in Texas that it's huge, huge, um, yeah, some codes do let me. There, there is huge company reached out to me because they were like, it looks like you're getting ready to develop this. Da, 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 we can help you. And I was like, I thought it was a prank call, but I actually looked them up. They're like one of the biggest apartment developers in the central Texas region. And it's because I increased the value of the land. I got a land lot in Temple. I started applying for the perk test and applying, uh, reaching out to architects and trying to get see what I could get developed there. And people reached out to me. And this is why when I, when y'all argue me down about, you know, this and that, I just laugh because I go, I just, I've lived too much life. I've talked to too many consulting calls. I've actually walked people through getting money. I've people taken the one page business course and got $30,000 on their first try. Everything I've learned, I've put into these business, into my courses, my business plans. We had issues with the videos in one of my, my courses. We changed all the videos out in a week. And so it's just like, you know, I'm always giving value and I'm always over delivering. And I know I am. So I'm not worried in this economy, in this recession, what's going to happen to me, right? Set some company in a, and have no problem obtaining credit. Dale 20K, no PG. Yeah, right? So so a part of the reason I'm bringing up this business funding is they're setting up a world and they're setting up many things for just business owners. And I know y'all get tired of me saying that, but it's really what's happening. So you're so why did I put on here 160k minimum credit score for Miss New landlord? And this is the this is the first response to most people. Well, you can go around it. There's cheaper places. There are other things. There's other places you can go. It's Manhattan. I'm not saying it's the best place, the only place. I'm just saying they are setting up the rules for who they want there. Right? If they say it's 160,000 minimum rent. A minimum income for the year and people are like oh that's insane not that many people make it i keep trying to get y'all to understand who is flooding our american shores this summer and this is no disrespect i'm telling you that a lot of american um indians from india chinese children uh you know the chinese business owners children and several other folks are going to be moving to our major cities new york parts of texas parts of california um, in efforts to relocate for a recession, 
right? And I hate using that word because words have power. And if you're sloppy with words, I hate that because it's just, it's such a disrespect. And so I understand when people try to correct my grammar, correct me speaking, because words have power, right? I'm on a trip with one of my aunts and she's, she's a grammar Nazi, man. It's crazy. Um, exactly, exactly, Sherry. Sherry's very right right now. And what ends up happening is these parents are going to have documentation their kids can rent places. One of the apartments I had wanted to work at on Far West Boulevard, but I couldn't get in. I couldn't work there for whatever reason. Could never get the documents. Are they they're approved? They're staffed and approved. Um, if you look at this area off Far West Boulevard, okay, in Austin, Texas, it's all immigrants. Like the whole building's immigrant students. So they already had their paperwork in the office set up that, hey, give me your give me your passport, give me your parents' information, and a bank statement. Let me say that again. Your passport, your parents' information, and a bank statement. So where did they get the bank statement from? These banks were from China. These banks were from Korea. We could, I mean, we could call and verify probably, you know, that these are actually legitimate paperwork. But this is why I keep telling you guys, they are not playing with y'all. Those, those bank statements could have been false. We don't know, right? Todd Chrisley got a place in LA with bank banks, right? Race. These are all things that people could do a quick phone call, but they don't, they don't verify. And a lot of this is a confidence game. A lot of the people coming to our shore this summer, they will rent those places, no problem. Or they will have businesses who rent that place. That's why when everybody's been talking about Airbnb and a lot of people are online, like the Airbnb market's going to crash. I laugh because they're talking about, hold on a second. I got to get the windows down over here. I'm like cooking. I'm like cooking in this car. A little bit of crack there. This rooftop back or something. It's it's cold and hot at the same time in the city. It's really crazy. So sorry if that makes a lot more noise because we're by the road. But my biggest thing is I'm trying to get you guys to understand that they're setting this world up for documentation for people of businesses. And so when people say, oh, Airbnb is over, it's crashing. No, 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 no. People who do luxury lifestyle living, and I forgot the exact word, but that's close to the word, is people like I'm I'm near Yellowstone. I'm not going to say my exact location, but there are people who own rental cabins, rental properties. They own them. Their name is on the lease. It's on the mortgage. And what ends up happening is those people can rent out these places for a year and have their money paid off. Right. And be done. Right. Because really, they want the property to maybe be here, what, a month, two months out of the year. Right. And so the rest of the year, they're they're leveraging it out. Um, I'm at a couple of the hotels here have bought the other hotels that went under during the pandemic. And all they did is put slap some paint on them and change the name. And a lot of times what you guys don't understand is this hotel business model. Uh, if you don't, and this is where I'm going to be careful. Immigrants know what real suffering is. People from parts of Africa, people who've traveled the world know what real suffering is. Being a kid that's traveled almost the whole freaking world with our families Japan, we've been to Europe, we've been to most of Central America, we've been to a bunch of South America, we lived in Alaska, we saw what real poverty looks like. Uh, when people come here and they complain about something being hard or being boring, I laugh. I laugh because I'm like, you don't know what hard is, right? Like, like you, you're experiencing extreme discomfort, but you're not experiencing hard. So these people who are willing to buy these hotels, live in them, clean them, for a year or two so they can turn around and do what? Get big ass money from banks and then go make other investments. Again, the other day I was having a conversation with my family and they were complaining because they're getting they're getting all these banks calling them to see if they want to refi refi their houses. I already told you, um, you know, I already told you that, you know, our family has real estate and all that other stuff. But they're getting these calls from banks to be like, hey, do you want to? Do you want to refi? Do you want to refi? And my family's like, I don't understand. Why would they give us all this money for this house? You know, the value's up. But what would I do with it? And I literally had to just stop and calm myself and be like, y'all, wealthy people do this. They take this cash out refi. They go buy 10 other assets that make them money. So the increased new payments don't matter. They don't take this cash out refi to go fix the house and go on vacation. That's what the middle class do and then are debt slaves for the next 10 years. You know, if you really look at people who get divorced, the, the number one reason divorce is, is money, right? And so a lot of times people are, they have an asset 
and they're misusing the asset. Okay, does that make sense? They're misusing the asset. So when I talk about cash out refund, people are like you're leading people to a burning house. No, I, this channel has levels. If you just need extra money in your pocket, go watch our side hustle stuff. Go watch our mobile notary stuff. Go watch this other stuff where you can learn to have systems and put extra money in your pocket. The diabetic test trip. All this stuff is for people who are like, Eric, I just need extra money. Okay, go do that. The conversations I'm having on here for higher level stuff and for people that come to my meetups and come to my boat parties and my tours, this is for them. Okay? But a lot of times what people are complaining about is they're setting up the world for people who own businesses. And Airbnb is no different. The people who really make money long term on Airbnb are people who own the house, people that own the property, people that can dictate and control who lives in their property, right? You know, people went from uh, just accepting regular tenants to accepting only traveling nurses, accepting only certain type of things. And they have the right to do that with their property because of property rights. But when you have people on the Internet fight you over just owning a house and people are like, Eric, is going to crash. Do you know how long people have been saying it's going to crash? They've been saying that since 2016. I shit you not. I've been on the internet since 2012. People since 2016, Dave Ramsey, all of them go, oh, it's going to crash. It's too high. Aisha Sullivan, um, love her, love everything about her. She hasn't bought any property since 2018 because she thought it was going to crash. We're in 2022. You cannot time the market. You just have to go by your numbers and your criteria. And so these people who are investing and owning these properties and making them short-term rentals are living in a different America than you. And just like this property in New York, in Manhattan, let me be very clear because I know y'all get on me for that because I make fun of New York. They know what type of tenant they want and they don't have to deal with people with less. Right. And there's a certain there's a reason they pick that number, because I, I'll let it to you know, like when people sue, um, when apartment buildings usually sue or try to go for back rent, people always say, oh, I don't have any money. And they're right. The average American makes 30K a year. They don't have any money and the bank gives them leniency. This is what's going on in Detroit massively. Right. Um, you know, they don't have any money. You're suing. You're suing for property taxes. I mean, your their refund check, which is a future check. You're not suing them, really, because they don't have any money. Well, when these landlords are picking higher income tenants, they know you have money. American Express sues people all the time. Ask anybody who has American Express or knows horror stories. American Express loves being selective about who they give cards to so they can come back and sue you. <laughs> OK, like they're not playing with you. But my biggest push on everything you see on this channel is not to lead anybody into some burning house, but for you to be educated enough that you're not out here just getting getting beat over the head. Right. Because this is this is the path that's being laid. You won't live in some of these cities unless you make money. Right. The number one thing people kept sending me and I love y'all. Y'all love blowing up my Instagram and sending Enrique all these articles. And I thank you. It helps make content for the channel. Oh, Erica, San Antonio is the number one place to move. You always talk bad about San Antonio being boring. You know why they're moving to San Antonio? Because you can buy a brand new house in some parts for $220,000. Brand new house in Austin is $400,000. It's a money thing. It's a money thing. And so why did I bring up this particular part in the conversation today? Real data versus fake data, right? <laughs> Careful on that fake news thing, right? Is I'm out here driving multiple cities that depend on tourism to spill over from Yellowstone, right? And what I mean spill over, that people are willing to drive 40 minutes, 50 minutes, two hours, three hours outside the city to save money on hotels and RV camping parts just to go to this big tourist attraction. Well, we're going through multiple towns who are having a, a slowdown. They're like, oh, it's really slow. It's really slow, but builders are still building all around them. Uh, people are building million dollar houses on the water. Someone's earmarking that. Some bank is earmarking that. Some private investors earmarking that. So when people say, oh, Erica, you know, these houses are going to crash. And I'll just start laughing because I explained in the video the other day. I know it was choppy. We're trying to fix it. But I also have another video I'm going to upload is it's it's what the builder determines the value of the property. No, Erica, it's what I'm willing to pay. Yes. In a regular market, in a regular not mess with the government, there's no there's no funny business in the business. You uh, you determine what the what the economy pays. But if I'm a builder and I buy this land and I start making improvements to the land, I can determine, hey, this, you know, compared to all around it, it's worth half a million dollars. And the bank is going to loan me or private money or several capital companies. There's millions of capital companies in America. Eighty percent on that money. Eighty percent on that that value. 
Now I take that 8%. If I'm a builder and I know tough times are coming, I'm going to do what? I'm going to build some to rent. I'm going to build some to keep. I'm going to build my nice house. I met a builder who was building this immaculate house in, in Wimberley, Texas. And I was like, why are you building this house right now? It's so crazy. You're, you're, you're so busy. He's like, because I know in a year or two, it's going to be hard to get these same people to come out here and work. Gas prices, reasons, whatever, people falling out the market, all kind of stuff he was saying. And I know, I know it's true. I just know it's true. I've talked to too many people and I like seeing boots on the ground. The reason I travel so much is I literally can talk to people and say, well, how's this business going? How's the hotel industry? I literally got to speak to the business owner of this place, an Indian woman. And she's like, how did you know I was the owner? I said, well, first of all, it's, it's about time to close. You're counting up everything. You're looking over this. You're looking, I just, I just have been having a conversation with her about it. I knew it. I knew it, right? Just from the care and di- the di- direction of how she was looking at the office. And so what I tell people, people who are in business are experiencing a slowdown, but they can tweak. The person who has a job, it's hard to tweak. This is a big argument in our community is you can get rich as an employee. Yes. Let me be very clear. Yes. Now, I'm not one of these people. Oh, you have to have a business or nothing else. If you're an employee making 150000 160000 200000 300000 400000 a year, heck yeah, you can get rich. But guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to take, you're not going to be balling everywhere. You're not going to be bodily every two weeks. You're going to be taking 50% of your income every single year for the next five to 10 years and investing either in apartment syndications, hard money lending, or other investments, which include stock, which include real estate. So, yes, as an employee, can you get rich? But you got to be paid well. A lot of people want to do the least work possible. If I start, I know this is how I know. I get on the phone so many times, people, and I say, hey, you got to do this, this, this. Oh, there's an immediate pushback. And I already know. I already know in the next two to five years, these people will be washed out and working for someone else. The reason I keep bringing Michael Sneed on, I'm trying to give y'all headwinds. Listen, you go buy a truck or two, you give these guys work. They're going to work for you. And you're going to say, no, Erica, why would people work for people? Because the way the economy will move, if you're not disciplined, if you don't have systems, if you're not following your SOPs, if you're not doing daily marketing activities, you will be working for someone else. When I sit here and tell y'all people going to come back to these offices, oh, no, Erica, gas, and people aren't going to come. Hey, hey, Bob, you want to make 45 this year working from home or you want to make 82? coming into the office. Now they know what they're doing. They're going to work you hard as a Hebrew slave. They're going to have you doing $150,000 worth of work for that 82,000. But that's where they are as business owners. They can play that game. Right? A million ways to get it. Choose one. Always. Always. And so part of why I'm I'm doing this and I'm talking about this and I'm going to do a webinar on it like maybe a, in the next week is because I see I see so many people, and I'll give an example. I had people working for me that was making 30K a year. Uh, two of them making 40K a year. And, um, and what ended up happening is they were like, hey, I got a job offer for 60K. And I, I almost laughed because I thought they were lying, but I knew companies are so desperate right now for people to work and come in office and do marketing and do this stuff. Somebody was going to pay her that. I knew they were. But if a recession happens, she's going to be back down to 45. 32, 35, because there'll be so many people competing, competing to uh, get a job that they'll be willing to take less pay. I know that. It's very unfortunate. But that's where we're going, right? That's where we're heading. Most of the work most people do at work is is repetitive tasks, administrative tasks, stuff that they can auto bot. They can put bots on it. They can put VA working the phones on it. You know, a lot of this stuff is repetitive. So what's going to end up happening, unless you are an income driver for a business, let me say that again, an income driver for a business means your job is either sales or you directly, you know, facilitate sales or money that comes into a company, your income is going to drastically be lower. The reason I keep promoting and talking hard about tech is everybody I know in tech, I had a friend leave tech, start four businesses with all his savings. All the businesses crashed in 2020. Guess what he did? He picked up the phone, called around and said, hey, I need a job. Like I put everything, all my savings, 
because he's been in tech for 12 years. He had all this money saved up and he put all this money in here and he lost it all. But guess what? Turned around and got a job for what? Almost 195000 in like two weeks. Once his wife said, you got to go back to work. I'm so sorry. I love you. This was a great idea. It just is a terrible economy time. You got to go back to work. He said, no problem. Picked the phone, called, had a job in a week. Now, is his feelings still hurt? For sure. It's two years later. He's still upset about it. But but the pandemic hurt people. But if you have skills, how hurt are you? Yes, you lost all your savings. I'm not I'm not minimizing his pain. He lost all his savings. Yes. He put all the money in the businesses. And he got a business loan for one of them. But him making 195. And then now, if you, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to say he's doing two or three jobs, but if you're smart and you're in tech and you can work multiple jobs from home, which he was doing before, I am sure he's doing it now. I haven't asked. I didn't want to be disrespectful at the dinner party, but I'm pretty sure he's, he's working probably two or three of those tech jobs remotely from home to make 200, 300, 400,000 for the year. Let's not be stupid. These people in tech know that like, Hey man, how many hours a day do I need to sit aside and do this? Okay. Let me do this. So he's going to, I mean, he's not going to make all the savings back because I know the number for the savings, which really sucks, but he could be able in the next two, three years or the next year and a half to recover some of what they lost to get bet, get back or buy some assets that his wife feels more comfortable buying because she makes some money, man. His wife also makes over 170 a year. So when he lost all the business, she was looking at him like, woo, woo, baby. You got to go back to work. We both got to have some money coming in here. So you got to be smart about it. See, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. AAE. There's 391 people in here. Thank you for your super chat. I'm going to read it and I'm going to address it. Please put a uh, one in the comments. Please put one in. The average employee right now is basing their, what they should be paid off inflation. Oh, before I go deeply into this, why do you put all the savings? Because you have a tech person. Tech people are sometimes very logical and they got a bank loan for a portion of it. And then the rest of the money he used um, in his way. Right. I'm telling you, DFC, um, there is a financing company I've, I've shown on here before that if people have um, construction or remodeling projects they need done at their house, there is companies that actually let you apply for credit to do that. So I think I've had that shown on here before. But DJ Cadillac, that's just it. They're not being taxed at 35%. They're not. This is why y'all don't. And I'm going to go back to that person's super chat. This whole, you're being taxed at 35%. You're being taxed. No, 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 you're not. Your first 100K is not being taxed at 35%. What ends up happening is these people have homes. They have cars. They have businesses. Even I meet a lot of tech people who, businesses on paper where they do consulting and it takes a loss or it takes a percentages, but they go put their money in investments. They are never fully taxed at 35%. Think about all your bonuses, your matches at work, your stock portfolio, your 401k, your SEP, your H HSA accounts. There are a million ways that people are not taxed at 35%. This is to me, I'm going to be honest, an argument for the lazy. Well, I don't want to work that hard because then I'd be taxed more. That's like when I hear men say, well, I'm not going to work more because then child support will take more. Not realizing, brother, you might not be able to work 20, 30 more years, period. Like just your back, your body, you don't know what will happen. You have to make smart decisions. And that's the stuff that, you know, again, people say some crazy mess. So for sure, for sure, for sure. But let me go over here. Let me answer your first thing. Let me go here. All right, so he says, listen, uh, let me read it out loud so you guys know where we're at. There's 408 people here. Hit the like button. Again, this conversation today is a state of the union conversation. We talked about uh, banks, loans, uh, lending. We talked about the New York, uh, Manhattan, excuse me, landlord asking for 160K. You're going to see this in more cities, I promise you. And number three, we're addressing work and what I see out here data versus real numbers, right? And so this is this is where we're going to have a data versus real number conversation. Are you ready? I'm going to respectfully disagree with you that someone who makes 60K will drop to 45K if there is a recession. What? Where? What is the reasoning? What's the reason? Y'all have seen that, that one with Cardi B? What's the reason? I want to know the reason. All right, here's the reason. A lot of people are doing fluff work. 
A lot of people are doing admin jobs. A lot of people are doing um, work that's repetitive that if, like, if you go into my class, I have a Zapier training. If I really activated the Zapier at the level it needs to be, I would have probably over 100 Zaps in it, and it would replace 35 hours of work for an actual physical office employee. There are some people with Zapiers that have over 750 Zapiers in them. Straight automation, just straight ate away someone's job. <laughs> Just straight away took away someone's money, okay? <clears throat> and that's where companies are heading. <clears throat> Excuse me. More automation, more, uh, you know, uh, tasks. Hold on, I never cracked this window. I'm going to start to you. Okay, we got to get some air circulating in this month. Okay, more, more things being completely automated, right? So really, at this point, you're just a watcher. If you go look at 150 out of 330 million Americans, only 150 million of them are working. Out of 150 million Americans, 75 million Americans make 30K a year or less. Okay, 30,000 a year or less. To be a manager at some of these places, you're going to make 45K. To be a manager at Chipotle, depending on the city and region, you make 60 to 90,000 a year. To be a to Taco Bell manager, some people make 60 to 90,000 a year. And these are regional managers that go to multiple stores are doing the job of three people. Let me be very clear. They're doing the job of three people, not just one person, three people. A lot of companies are trying to find ways for you to do the job of three people. This is why I'm arguing for you to always be paid more. What's going to happen is they're going to start offering people. Again, Elon Musk is a perfect example of this. Hey, um, instead of coming out him saying, listen, we're not really letting you work from home no more. They just didn't want to say that, right? And they needed to say they need to cut 10% of their staff. Instead of saying they say, hey, if you ain't gonna work from if you're not gonna come in the office, you ain't gonna have no job. Now people are like, I can't believe he said that. We want to work from home. We're millennials, we're Gen Xers, we want to work from home. I am telling you, away employers are going to cut this market and clear it up because a lot of people are being are overpriced and overpaid for small menial tasks. They're going to start doing this. Hey, man, listen, you want to work remote? No problem. I'll pay you 50K a year for working remote. I'll pay you 40K a year. Go look at a lot of these claims adjusters and people that work from home. They're only making $15, $18 an hour. Some of them $25, $30 an hour. It's a traveling claims adjuster that make the money. I'm going to pay you 50K for if you want to work from home, you want to do remote work. But if you want to come into the office, Bob or Jeff, I'm going to pay you 82 92 it's going to be so drastically different in the price points they're going to offer people that people are going to jump up and jump into the office. Now, why are you saying you don't think that the price is going to drop that lower? I can tell you right now. Why is that going to happen? Some companies are going to go under. We have a ton of tech companies that don't make profit right now. And of course, this is a this is a shell game they play with California because California taxes them so much. But a lot of startups happen in California, right? It's where a lot of money was. A lot of startups are now starting to happen in Texas on paper and in Florida and in Nashville, Tennessee. Why? Because you go where the money is. Your private lender, your money lender is in Texas and we're like, hey, I'll I'll bankroll this project, but it's gotta be here. Now you gotta recruit talent to get there, right? But what's happening in this economy right now? As it softens in some cities and strengthens in others, talent is moving. Right. What's the number one argument? All these companies saying we can't we can't find the talent. We can't find people who have the skills. We can't find people who are who, who can do this stuff. They're claiming they can't find the talent. Right. When you and I both know, again, real data versus fake data. Oh, I wouldn't do that job for 50 K. They'd have to be 60, 70 K. They'd have to pay me 80 K. They'd have to pay me 90 K to do that job. Right. I'm not moving there. They have to pay me more. And what's going to end up happening is. Companies have been playing that game. They've been giving people excess money. But the tech companies that do a, a, a shaving, some of these other companies that do a shaving in a recession, which shaving means they're letting go of like non-performers on staff or non-essential on staff. Those people that have these degrees and these law, you know, they got MSNBC behind their name, MBA behind their name. They're going to start working for some of these companies. I have two friends who are in tech who are willing to take a pay cut just so they could have the title of manager and the other guy have the title of COO. The guy who owns the company is a multimillionaire, but he was only going to offer, basically it's a vice president position, but it's a different position. It's hard for me to describe in the short time period, but essentially 
it's a role where you're doing a ton of work. And he was only going to offer 250000 for it a year. Now, you can say, Erica, that's a ton of money. 250000 is a lot. Yeah, but the way people are setting up vice president and COO positions right now, they're making you basically run the whole day of the company. And they just come in and do a report. Hold on. I'm doing a video. Go back. What tablet? Go ahead. Open the door. So y'all don't see my family. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um. So, so what's going to happen is literally my friend was going to take a $40,000. Uh, for, he's, he makes, he makes two ninety a year. He's going to take a $40,000 a year pay cut just so he could have the title of, of COO y'all. I mean, like he didn't care. About that, but he's like, well, it's just forty k. I can take the pay cut. Well, what? Well, guess what happens? They're gonna start. They're gonna start pay cutting more. They're gonna say, well, will you do it for two hundred thousand? Well, you know, times are tough. Could you be a? Could you be a vice president for one ninety five? And y'all have to understand, there are people who went to school with these these titles behind their names. They want the title. They don't. The pay is important, but they want the title, right? And so the convenience factor versus do we need you at this job is going to play in. When, when Kamala Harris says we need half a million H-1B visas for tech folks and we're sitting here with all these people unemployed. Again, when I talk about real data versus fake data, prime example, have you been to the grocery store? Are prices higher? Put a yes in the comments. You know, just put a yes in the comments. Have you been to the gas pump and the gas is higher? Gas is 568 where we're at right now. We're unregular. OK, have you been? You know, have you realized rent is higher? Have you seen all these things? These are things of inflation, right? But if you read the data that the government has, oh, inflation is not that bad right now. Oh, prices aren't that bad. What are you talking about? If you ask the government right now how bad is inflation, they're saying it's not bad at all. What are you talking about? It's just fine. It's absolutely perfect. That's why I like going out here, getting boots on the ground and talking to people. Everybody that's at this hotel working is a foreign exchange student. They have no American staff. They only have one Hispanic guy that's cleaning and the rest are all foreign exchange students. Go into the Yellowstone National Parks. There's it's, it's worked by all college students, except for the park rangers, of course. Go in many of these cities. They're using cheaper labor, foreign exchange students. Foreign workers, I told y'all when I went on my trip to Upper New York to see what, what did Upper New York look like and why are people talking so bad about Upper New York. And all the places had foreign exchange workers, brand new hotel off Lake Placid, New York. Everybody in there was from Venezuela. And I said, how did y'all get here? I thought they had like illegally came here. He's like, no, no. The hotel participated in the government program to get workers from other countries here. And that's how we're here. You don't think these companies are going to get this labor price down? Oh, honey, <laughs> I want to tell you right now, if you work, listen, people want to be tied to security and and the recession hype has been going on for six years now. I am telling you as a person who's been on this Internet since 2012, y'all have been saying, oh, it's a recession. 2016, y'all been saying it's a recession. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. 21, 22. Erica, who's buying these houses? When I was going to buy a house for 275 in, in, in Austin, people were like, oh, I'd never pay that. I used to pay 150 to live that far out. Now those same people are like, well, I'm going to move to San Antonio. And now they still got to pay 200000 when they move to San Antonio because the price is up. So I'm always like, look at the real data on the street. COVID is wearing everybody out. Well, if it's wearing everybody, why are there hundreds of thousands of homeless people still in California? They ain't fell, dropped dead. Because they outside unmasked, all near each other, unvaccinated. You know what I'm saying? I, I just want you guys to really challenge and think about that. But I know a lot of people don't, don't challenge it, don't think about it. Nobody believes that they will take a pay cut. No one believes that. Ask all these people who are in their 50s that get laid off. Go look up a couple YouTube channels called Laid life after layoff. There's one dude, he has a channel called Life After Layoff. I have one of my students, I wish she would do it, but I don't know if she's going to do it about helping seasoned workers uh, get jobs. Keyword seasoned workers. Seasoned workers get jobs. This is a big word people aren't using. Seasoned workers. What does that mean? 
That means someone who's been in the industry, has experience, yet they're struggling to get a job. When I talk about LinkedIn and people are like, what's that? We still have people asking what's LinkedIn in 2022. When that's the number one way for recruiters to just go online and pick you up. If you have the right words in your profile, they're picking you up. There's 500 people here right now. Am I, am I off? I know I'm not off because I've been doing this for years now. But they're going to cut. This happens every time there's a recession. Because if the ma majority, and I'm going to say 50% of our society, they don't care. they rather just get up, go to work, you know, go through the routine of getting in traffic, go through the routine of eating, you know, dinner and complaining and cookouts on Friday. They don't want to hear this. They don't care. And that Billy Bob or Susan will take a pay cut and show up to work every day because that is that's what they want to do. They don't want to think outside the box. You know, every time I get on phone call, people go, oh, I'm a retired. And I go, well, how much do you have in retirement? They have nothing. They're like, I'm going to get Social Security. You know, not knowing Social Security don't pay a lot, right? That's the average American. So will the average American, if all that's offered is 45K, will they take it? Yeah. They're already taking 30K. If 75 million Americans are already taking 30K a year, they're going to take the 45. Right? People are people are confusing what skills are. Oh, man, I have all these skills. You do? You have all these skills. Okay, well, why are you being compensated for those skills? Right? A lot of it's courage. A lot of it's courage and systems. I'm telling you now, we've had... And I'm going to say this and people think I'm a hater, but I want to be very clear. The steamy money made people look like winners. And I don't mean just on the uh, bought a Blambo, bought a rented Lambo, hung out in Miami. I'm talking about on the business side. There are people who started businesses and courses and consulting and they didn't know what the hell they were doing. They were buying assets and doing crazy stuff. And in the next two to five years, you're going to see who's who. It's going to wash out a bunch of daggone people. They're going to be out of business. They're going to be out of commission. They're going to be going back and doing something else. You already see it happen. You already see people, I'm done selling my course now. I'm going to go do this. You already see all these people talking about trucking. Some of them are actually back driving their truck. You ask them why, oh, you know, I just, you know, it's hard finding employees or whatever, whatever. We already know this is what's going to happen. You have people looking like superstars selling $27 courses. You know what I'm saying? And then in the next two years, if they didn't buy any assets with this money, they're going to be looking crazy. That's why you see the ad spend so heavy right now on Instagram, on YouTube. The economy is, is softened. And I told y'all this maybe six months ago for my students. Like, okay, if you're trying to sell courses, you know, you almost have to over deliver on a lower price point so that the consumer feels comfortable purchasing it. And then you build a relationship from then on. Because once somebody buys one thing from you, they'll buy multiple things from you. It depends on, depends on where they are, right? But again, they'll take less. And I hope that wasn't too long of a rant, but I want y'all to understand that. Jay White, congratulations, Jay White. I'm not going to say, again, Jay White, what did we just say? If you understand the nuance of what we're saying, people who are in tech can make their salary, can make their choices. Even if I don't agree 100%, I still support Erica because YouTube needs this energy. Yeah. The admin jobs will automate by people like me. Therefore, there will be new jobs as business optimizers. So what recession? AE, again, if you're just here to be a contrarian, I mean, I'll take your super chats. Thank you. I'll take them. Thank you, sir. I appreciate them. Every bit of them. Here's the thing. We get in silos. We get in silos. And this is something I've, I, I actually address often for myself. I'm going to parties and events and I'm going to different conferences. And people are like, oh, what are you talking about? Let's go to the snowboard. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. I literally sat at a dinner. Everybody at that table made over $190,000 a year. And even if their wife made maybe 30, 40K, it didn't matter because it's what he was making. And it was tech women at the table making 185. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I was talking to this customer and, and you know, they only make 40K a year. And everybody was like, 40K a year? It was like Grey Poupon commercial. It was crazy. It was like 40K a year, Erica? How can they live off 40K a year? Because that's crazy. Like, no way. And I'm like, I literally had to sit there and stop dinner and be that asshole at dinner and go, y'all, 75 million Americans make $30,000 a year or less. And all my friends were like, what? Oh, my God. Like, 
where how and even two of the dudes wives who were like well baby i only make 40 and they're like well you have a this type of job and he only they mentally dismissed their own wife telling them well honey i don't make that much like well yeah 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 but i'm like they couldn't even fathom with their own wife sitting beside him and she doesn't make that much and them talking about how they had to haggle for a three thousand dollar year increase when their husband switched jobs and got an additional fifteen thousand because they're in tech plus stock options, you get in silos. And so this is a statement of a silo. Well, no worries. I mean, I'm just going to optimize it. You're going to need job address. This is like people telling people in the factories, don't worry if the factory closes. We'll still need people to help do something. Well, the guy or girl who just wants to show up to the factory and work is still alive and matters. The guy or girl who still wants to go work in the coal mines, which is crazy because of what it does to your lungs, they still matter. They don't want their job optimized. They just want to show up. The reason you had Donald Trump come into office is because all these places that used to be super democratic and union ran and the Rust Belt and the Midwest were like, hey, you took all the factory jobs and sent them overseas. Oh, no worries. You'll do other jobs. What other job are they going to do? There was a thing where they were showing how they there's different programs showing in West Virginia where they were teaching coal miners how to be honeybee. Um like how to basically plant and develop honeybees at different farms and do different stuff and just small, smaller jobs. And the number one response of the coal miners was like, why would I do that? That doesn't make a lot of money. They were like, Hey, we can put you in these tech programs and teach you how to do this stuff. Coal miners are like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. In Detroit, right? People are like, man, Detroit's so crazy. Detroit had some of the highest skilled labor ever. When I go to Dallas, Majority of the people you will meet, I'm just going to say this and go there. Black men that, you know, you end up bumping into and talk. Hey, where are you from? I'm from Detroit. Oh, what are you doing out here? Oh, I work construction down here in Dallas. Or I work at this factory down here in Dallas. These people, there, there's no such thing as job optimization for some of these folks. That's what they want to do. They're not going to change. They're not going to stop doing construction. They're not going to stop doing stuff. Now, my, my ode to those black men that left Detroit and went to Dallas, congratulations. You just got to upgrade. Now you bought a house. Now you work in construction in a city where there's just nonstop construction. If you just have your, your certifications and, you know, your license and bonded, you're straight. But this idea that we're just going to optimize jobs and these people are going to go home, this is part of why I used to say winter is coming. And, and you see the increase of women going into tech, right? The reason I'm, I, I haven't been as anti-job as late, but I've been very like uh, on jobs because I hate going to a workplace where somebody's trying to micromanage you. And racist, racist things happen, right? And a lot of the past jobs I've experienced. And what I keep trying to get y'all to understand about this economy is if you got a certain amount of skills, you can come to office and demand respect. If you don't, then you're just stuck, right? I mean, look at the countless means of people like going to work, hating my life. Again, this whole idea, this is a silo conversation you're having. This is the I'm in tech and I do this. And so it's everything's fine conversation. Well, I make money. I don't understand why other people aren't making money. I always have to check myself and, you know, we call it the privilege, the woke, whatever. Because I literally look at people, I go, why don't you just go do this and create that? Or why don't you go just get a skill or get a trade? And these trade schools are offering for free. But the number one people think people say is, oh, blue collar is hard in the body. Baby, if you're not talented enough or you're not skilled or you're not have the temperament for tech or office work, then you need to go get in where you can get in. You dig, which is blue collar and trades. Right? So again, um, let's just all be aware of how we're saying stuff. There you go. Private industry, not federal government. Truthfully, government doesn't like to pay adequately when it actually a lot, uh, actually a lot of private companies pay too much. So Lamar, a big thing about one of our friends, Kendra Barnes, that used to come on the show, the key resource man there's a 543 people here hit the like button uh, i'm on vacation and i appreciate y'all being here um if nothing else hit the like button you don't even have to cash at me okay hit the like button okay um kendra barnes was 20 something 29 years old working in a federal government job and she was just doing so well they promoted her but then all of a sudden she asked for this new promotion and the boss said well you're kind of young why don't you wait a couple years and then ask for it again see if you can get to this new level and she's like why when i've been getting all these great marks. I've been getting good reviews. Why can't I apply for the next level of GS, whatever government job? I'm trying to say your job, right? And the guy looked at her like, well, there are people in their 40s and 50s in this office that, you know, they want to apply and they should be considered. 
So even though people are like, yeah, the government is is non-discriminatory, you know, hire women and minorities and all this other stuff. The government has its biases, too. It has its shit in the in the stew, too. Like it has its issues, too. Part of why you see so many of these wholesalers going to government contracts is because they're go getters. Right. Wholesaling dried up. Right. Most people are educated about the price of their home or if they keep their land and do a few different things to their land, they can do it. So what does that wholesaler do? That wholesaler goes and go, where can I make money? And I'm a go getter and I'll make phone calls. I'll go do this government contracts and also building new construction because the government's asking you, can y'all build affordable housing? We need about four million units of affordable. Ha- where, who's building the affordable housing? Builders are like, shit, I don't want to build no affordable housing. But we'll pay you. Well, not as much as the private sector. This is why you see these big push for apartments because the builder can make money and also say, well, I allotted up 50 units for this. But that's another conversation you're not really ready to have. So, Listen, DJ Khaled, I'll tell you so many people. Um, there you go. And Walmart cashiers are now security guards due to automation. And here looking at the back. Listen, Walmart's a prime example of that. ATB now start doing it, which makes me upset that they have these cash registers. You checking yourself out? I'm not working for y'all. Put more cash registers in this office. Like it's insane to me. Thank you, Dan. There you go. That's cool, Tim. I feel like a sucker. To sign a contract for 150 and only bring home 95. DJ Kelly, then you need to adjust your listen. That's a whole nother conversation. Then you need to be adjusting your exemptions. You need to be adjusting some other stuff. But that's a whole nother conversation. We're not ready for for this to the video today. Exactly. Indirectly make people come back to the office. You're gonna nudge them with a carrot or a stick. Oh, well, y'all don't want to come back in the office? You're all fired. Oh, no, 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 that's too harsh. Oh, it's too harsh? Well, how about this? To be more fair, and this is what companies are going to do, to be more fair, you know, how about we offer people who come in the office 82000 and up? Anybody who wants to work from home, 50. Now, let's be honest. If you're a mother and you've got investments, because you love your work, but you got investments, you're going to do that work from home. If you're a man and you're like, my wife can't look me in the face and let me take 50 k when I could be bringing home 82, you're going to the office. And this is the thing. That's why the baby boomers and people are mad about this, you know, where it's going. Hey, thank you so much for the final sticker. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where people are. There you go. There you go. There you go. I'm telling you, Patrick D- B- David recently said the same thing about current employee compensations being musical chair situation that will correct during the recession. Listen, there's 536 people here. Definitely hit the like button. But let me tell you, he's not lying. Uh, the number one, okay, I used to work for Lowe's as a, a, a lower level manager, a lower level when I first got here, right? And higher level managers, and, and again, this was not, I mean, again, the manager above me was making 45K a year. I was part-time. He, and literally Home Depot called down the street. Of one of their recruiters off LinkedIn was like, oh, you, you've been working for, uh, you know, Lowe's? for five years you're a manager okay uh, would you like to make 60k a year right and i was listening to the guy and i was like okay so you're leaving here you make 47 ish a year and you're going down the street for 60 yeah that's the number one way home depot got managers they let lowe's train you and it was a running joke you, that everybody got a call from home depot at some point Everybody got a call from Home Depot at some point. One of their recruiters like, hey, we'll give you. They knew how much they were paying. They already knew how much Lowe's was paying you. And they just did the math. Okay, well, how about if we pay you 10K more? So imagine that. Home Depot don't have to go out and recruit somebody and train them up for years. They just take somebody else's manager, give them a 10K bump, which some of that's going to get eaten up by taxes. And now you're going to switch jobs. This is very, this happens often. Y'all think I'm joking. Again, when I go to events, and I go to the conferences. Um, I remember there was a bunch of Facebook folks there. They were like, hey, where do you work? And I, I was like, oh, no, I work for myself. Well, you know, Facebook's hiring. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get you in the door and train you. And I'm like, to do what? He's like, girl, we train everybody to do whatever. Right. And it was kind of a running joke. But it was it was they sit the minority staff there to recruit minorities. They didn't care. And so what you have right now is an economy where 
companies are trying to do the woke thing. Hey, we try to get minorities in the door and women in the door. You see where Wells Fargo made up a lie and said that they 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 were they interviewed all these black and women people for a job that was already filled. So they got caught doing that. This is the stuff that is happening right now. But in a recession, companies could go, oh, we can't play that game. Oh, we can't hire more, interview more women. We're just so strapped. It's a recession. Or, which they already show you, studies show you 90% of the time, women never challenge what is the first suggested income. I had a friend working in tech and she was working a part-time job and no one could understand why she was working a part-time job. They said, honey, your job ought to be paying you 90000 a year. She was getting paid sixty, you y'all. She, she just let the guy tell her. He's like, well, this is our job offer 60 k She said, okay. And her co-worker had to tell her. A male co-worker said, what? You're making what? Go look up glass door. He thought, you know, she thought he was lying. He was like, honey, your job pays 90. And she went and looked on glass door. This is a girl who's not dumb. She was, she's a smart girl. She's in tech. And she didn't even think to ask. This is what's happening. They're going to play this on a lot of levels. They're just going to be out here like, well, the job pays this. And they know women won't negotiate or fight back or argue. And there you go. They're paying her less. But this is where, again, this is where the consumer has to educate themselves. This is where somebody who's trying to apply for work, I don't understand someone not trying to get a job that pays 100K a year minimal. They're going to work you like a dog. <laughs> Why not? They're going to make you go to meetings. They're going to get on your last nerves. Why not? Why not get paid? Appropriately. Come get a, a, again, I brought on Ronald Gatewood for the Tech Tuesday. He has one cert, A plus, that's it. And people are like, how is he still working? Same reason a lot of people are in tech. You get your foot in the door, learn skills. It's the experience and the recruiters that keep moving you around. But y'all, y'all don't hear me. It's musical chairs right now. Hundred percent remote paid less ever before the pandemic. I don't know why people are surprised by this. This is why I keep telling y'all. People keep playing. North Carolina, listen, I I think my phone's about to die on us. So I've been in North Carolina the past couple weeks, fixing some paperwork, trying to get some properties and stuff done and sold. And I'm telling you, like, they're pumping that place up. I'm sorry. There's so much in here. I'm missing it. I'm telling you, it's the startup news. Thank you. Mini crash. Listen, 2020 took a lot of people out. I had a little mini crash with some of the trucks. I had a mini crash with this. I had a mini crash with that. Um, I know several other businesses had a mini crash. And it was just like, it was just a shifting of like, oh, wait. That's not working like I want it to work. I'm done with it, right? Um, they're like the guy told you who had the four businesses closing. When you look back, you go, "Why did you use your savings? Why'd you get more loans?" But then it had been worse because he's very a very logical person, a very conservative person. So more loans for him would have made him feel, you know, absolutely worse, right? So uh, using his savings made him feel like, "Well, I had the savings. I could have did it, right?" For whatever reason. Right. I have two friends who are getting ready to start a farm, you know, because they just make so much money in tech. They're like, ah, I'm going to do this on the side. You know, I mean, again, it's, it depends on where people are. There are many crashes going on everywhere. Thank you. 40K is foreign. It doesn't make sense. It really did, Tim. Like I sat there and they looked at me like I was crazy. Right now, traveling CNAs can make uh, $60 an hour. There are tech people who are temps who make fifty dollars an hour, but a traveling CNA like that's not even a nurse. That's a, that's a butt wiper. Shit, I was like telling my little cousin she she has um she's partially blind in one eye, so she there's not a limit to what she can do, but she, you know there kind of is, right? And she got her seat and she was, and I was like, girl, you can go be a traveling CNA. You can go make fifty dollars an hour. Like we were all like hyping her up. I mean, it just you know. See, you, I would, I would get pissed at you calling every day. <laughs> but here's the thing. Again, if a person owns their properties for sale by owner, I'm always like, okay, what's going on? Do they not want to listen to their real estate agent? I have friends who are realtors who are like, the market has changed in Austin. And yet people are still trying to sell you a million dollar plus home. It ain't happening. 
but people don't listen. They don't listen to us too late. There you go. Yeah, silo is how money is lost. This is true. Child branch. I mean, uh, again, here's the and I gotta I gotta thank you for the super chat. If you watch this channel, what's the number one thing I tell you, child branch? I tell you one, go get an assessment by uh, DJ the Money Coach. Let his team give you an assessment of where you are financially and what's your risk tolerance. Do you have any debt? Do you have any other stuff? Just getting tax liens. If I have 60K, I'm going to go buy a whole freaking property. What are you talking about? If I've got 60K, I'm going to go buy a land lot and then have the for 20K and have the 40K to start building the new construction, either duplex or, you know, vacation rental. Like, again, 60K, depending on who you're talking to, is a different conversation. So just investing it in tax liens, okay? So you're you're putting the 60K in tax liens for the 18, for the 12 to 25% return on your money for the next two to three years, because tax liens aren't a 60-day turnaround. They're a year to six-year turnaround. You know what I mean? So again, if you're if 60K is your only 60K you have, you should put it in something that makes you active money. But that's, I mean, that's something... You know, everybody's not ready for that conversation. So again, thank you, Child Brash. But again, you need there's so much more that needs to be answered with that. That's what I'm telling you. People keep trying to convince you that rent's gonna lower, it's gonna be a break. Listen, these people, some of these builders I'm meeting, they'll sit, they'll let that house sit and for they'll rent it to you for pennies on a dollar. There's some people who are like, I F tenants, I'll never deal with a tenant again. I only do short term rentals or traveling nurses. I won't deal with any of these people ever again. So they're already setting up the market for this gap space. And apartments, I told you, when I worked in apartments, we didn't lower the rent. You know what we did? We gave concessions. Hey, y'all, and you're going to start seeing it again. You saw in 2008, you'll see it again. Oh, man, we're going to give you four months rent free if you sign an 18-month contract. So then I make my quotas. I make my numbers. The bosses are happy. You're locked into the 18-month contract. When they go to the bank and say, look, bank, I have a full apartment complex. With 18 month contracts, 24 month leases. Look how good this is. Even though they just gave four months free rent to like half the complex, it it is for the banks. It's for the banks and it's for document processing and it's for tax breaks. So again, you know, there when people say it's gonna crash, or it's gonna crash, I go, who's crashing it? What's a crash? What's the bottom? A few people sell their house for less than they want. If you were in Austin and you bought a house for two hundred thousand in twenty twenty, and now it's selling for five hundred thousand, uh, you just experienced hyperinflation. But let's say you you sell it a year later from now because the economy softened for four hundred thousand, dude, you still bought it for two hundred. You're still walking away with excess money. Let's say it really crashed and it goes down to three fifty. You can't sell your house for three fifty, and you bought it for two twenty. You still walk away with one fifty. This is the crazy. This is the craziness people are trying to sell you that, oh man, it's gonna crash to the ground and you're gonna get a chance to buy in. No, you're not. No, you're not. The bank is gonna have more stringent rules. A lot of people who wanted to buy a house and they couldn't buy a house, they go do something else. They go rent. They go travel. They go do something else. Again, people are trying to convince you that this this big giant uh, crash is happening and it's gonna be so great. Exactly, the Lone Star. This is the time when people when people say, Erica, I don't know if I should start a podcast or start a YouTube channel. Listen, I've already told you, if you've been thinking about it, you ain't going to do it. We already know where you're at. You ain't doing it. You've been thinking about it too long. But if you want to start when times are down and build up, yeah, this is the time to do it. Because at the end of the day, like a lot of the people you think are superstars, they're having a mini crash. I'm running across a bunch of people who had core sales making eighty hundred thousand dollars a month now they're like whoa what's going on and i look at them i say please tell me you bought a bunch of investments with this money is if you didn't you're about to have a rough winter a lot of people rest at his jobs you make more as contractors <laughs> this guy she said most of my coworkers make between 120 and 150 they've been there since before i was born 
I'm telling you, there are people in our economy who've been just coasting for a long time. Long time. You can't you can't tell them that they've been coasting for years. And they're like, what are you talking about? Recession where? All right, we're going on an hour. It's a little long. I know I start to lose folks when I do this. Um, it's 497 people here. Definitely hit it. Uh, the Bronx for NY rent is 220, period. 2,220, period. Again, Adele Star, again, if the average American is not making a lot of money, you know, and you keep hearing these cries on the internet, why is rent 2,000? You got a lot of people making barely 3,000 a month. They bought a car, they got student loan debt, or they got some other, some, some credit card debt, and they can't afford it. They can't afford that rent. Congrats. <laughs> you know, congrats then. Yeah, do what you do, man. They do want to see results, but I have noticed people with Ivy League degrees being able to bounce more. They're able to bounce from job to job. They're able to bounce from company to company. They're able to get in the room and talk about investments. That's a big reason why I joined. You see me joining these associations and these groups. Some people are like, oh, Erica, you can do your own thing. I do. I do do my own thing. I have my boat parties. I have my conferences. People come to the events and they partner with each other. It's a wonderful thing. But I am telling you, I go to these other things to see what's where's the money moving? Where's it being invested? And a lot of these guys, two years ago, <coughs> excuse me, in some of these groups, they had, you know, an e-com store. They had something. They had something they were selling. They were doing ticket reselling. And they let the bank receipts of that money coming in and out allow them to get money up to a million dollars in car, credit cards and funding and loans. And they took that money and these groups I'm in and invested in real estate. I am telling you, I, when people fight me, especially African-American people fight me on real estate, I am sitting in groups and, and in a four year window, two or three guys from foreign countries, Australia, Middle East, they come in these groups. They got business credit cards because the way our country set up, they, they had ticket reselling businesses and a couple of them had e-com stores. The paperwork was nice for a good nine months. They took that paperwork, went to the bank, got cash off those businesses. This is why it's important to have your banking, your documentation, right? They got money off their Stripe accounts. They got money off their PayPal loans. They took that money and dumped it into real estate. There's one guy in there bought a franchise insurance store company or whatever, insurance location. The, again, I'm telling y'all, people, they start the businesses not just to be like, I'm in a business owner. I'm going to Miami every two weeks. No, they start it because they have a goal in mind. And this is this is where we're headed. You don't have a goal in mind. You're going to be working for somebody and you're not going to be working for the top dollar unless you really can prove that you bring in money. This is another thing. When Kamoy comes on and she talked about um, your por portfolio and all that stuff, I really want you all to listen to some of the stuff that some of my guests say. If you're at a job right now, you should write in your portfolio everything you do and everything you accomplish for that company. If you're accomplishing a certain amount of sales every month or you're accomplishing, uh, hey, I managed over 15 people in this, this, and this, or I, I put together group projects, gloss that thing up and write it up. Because what's going to happen is companies are like, well, what did you do there? What did you do for that company? You know what I'm saying? Like, what did you do for them? What have you done for me lately? Oh, man, you got so much in here. I apologize. I'm not. And this is the thing. I told you, Erica, there's another YouTuber that you have mentioned in past weeks who is shaming black women who bought home, saying you will die broke. Listen, this is listen to me. I I cannot stress enough. I've seen um, one of our neighbors. The man had two homes. The woman had one home. She sold her home, moved in with that man. They lived together. They were married for about 10 years. At the end of the 10 years, because they were both military, the basically the military was, uh, basically the divorce judge was like, oh yeah, you good. You got a pension. He got a pension. Go on about your way. You're separate. He don't owe you nothing. So this woman had no house. She just had her pension. 10 years of marriage, done. 
I would never recommend to any woman out here, and this is not like a divorce advocate at all. I'm I'm anti-divorce. I think it hurts families. I think it hurts children. I've said it to my own family, my own parents, right? Um, that you should have assets. And this is the thing. When people, you ever listen to people, well, I sold this house to get into a bigger house. If you had to sell your first home to get into your second home, you didn't make enough money. And you, something's wrong with your, oh, well, I didn't want to have renters. I didn't want to be a landlord. I didn't want to do this. It always some bullshit excuse. But, oh, I just need to sell. You needed to sell that house in order to qualify for the next house is what you're saying. And that happens often. Uh, if I meet a black, again, when people are like, oh, black woman's network is low. I'm like, listen to me. If she owns that house in 10 years, at the end of 10 years, when we see astronomical black male homelessness in the street and black people, family homelessness, and you are criticizing someone who owns a house. Now, I I, I have a lot of male cousins and I kind of have an idea where they're going and about two brothers going with this conversation. What they're kind of saying is, is this woman flexible to move where this man wants to move? Or is she tied to this house? I was dating a guy one time when I was talking about buying a home in Texas. He was like, well, you going to always stay in Texas? I said, well, I'd be open to moving. Depends on where we're moving. But you can see in his eyes already, like, he didn't have a house. So why would I buy a house here? I'm going to be stuck in Texas forever. And I'm like, that's not how houses work. And this was a smart guy, y'all. This guy was in tech. He's not a dummy. He just was looking at me crazy. Like, well, what if, what if you get another job offer? You want to move? I'm like, what job offer could offer me enough to move me to another city? This is a mindset thing, too, you guys. I want you to understand this. If you have a great community, great family, great networking where you live, and some job goes, hey, I'll offer you 12 grand more to move to a new place where you don't know anybody, don't know anything far away from your family, would you take it? No. I mean, again, when people talk about job offers, I kind of laugh because I go, depending on what type of skills you got, you can work remotely. You don't have to go in office. I know a girl who worked for IBM for over 20 years, 15 years now. She hasn't been in office in years. She traveled all the time for them and makes killer money. But she's a salesperson. She makes sales. She manages relationships. She can do that. You just doing admin work, you're not going to do that. But again, this is some. This is a mindset problem. You know, even when I had Kamari, Kamari on, uh, Mr. Ellis, he was like, well, these black people get trapped in these neighborhoods. A house does not trap you anywhere. This is a very dangerous talking point people are having. Very dangerous. Yeah. Your girl, I hope you understand that people who preach the absolute opposite of what you're saying, real estate. Yeah, I mean, it's just dangerous. Post job receipts and accomplishments on LinkedIn. Yeah. No, if you're a second assistant and you do a great job, honey, trust me, I know people right now, they, they're why they they forgot their wives' damn birthday, honeymoons, and their executive assistants reminded them what time it was. Executive assistants will always have a place. If somebody's a busy person, you will always have a place. As an immigrant, we don't care about the price. We're just happy to own a place, a piece of this beautiful country. Uh, there you go, boy Robin. Thank you for your super chat. I, I want you to understand, like, I drove by, we drove by one of these little small towns. Mom was like, oh, who owns something out here? And I was like, Mom. The guy or girl who owns this is just happy to own it. And and the difference in the economy, if you depend on where we go in the next two to five years, if you have skills, you can you can move this thing all around how you want to. If you own a business and you know this, you internally you know this, you got to run ads, marketing, you can push it or pull it or grow your business or change it. You could do more masterminds. Like right now, we're like two people are trying to recruit me and talk to do a mastermind in uh, Columbia. Uh, later this year and I was like okay no problem like okay y'all set up all this and I'll be there and I'll help educate and teach and do whatever we'll mastermind the people who are willing to pay and be in person are, are just different levels of people y'all and everybody's saying oh there's not that many people out there no, no that's not that many people where you are that's not that many people where you're vibing at but they're out here I promise you the tech people making this money in Austin the people who are in certain companies making all these sales they're out here you do have to dedicate a percentage of your time to joining some of these associations and groups. Um, you'd be surprised how many times I get on the phone with people who have great businesses that have been in a city or town for years and they aren't a part of the Chamber of Commerce. They aren't a part of any of the local stuff going on in their local city. 
So if something happens, people are like, oh, I didn't know that happened to your business. They didn't even know you had a business. The number one thing I did when I worked for United Way in Fayetteville, North Carolina, was call around to all the business owners. One, ask them to donate. And two, see if they wanted to be a part of events we would have. And so when people sit here and say, oh, I'm not of this, I'm not in Chamber of Commerce, I'm just under the radar, I'm flying under the radar, I just laugh because I go, flying under the radar will make you lose your business. Flying under the radar will make you have no money when it comes to loans. Flying under the radar when you need some help, it's, a not, a, it's not a good deal. If y'all can see how many times people reach out and email, hey, Erica, let's do this, and I go, mm, I just can't. It's not in line with my vision, as Tim Jackson says. Or I just let them know, hey, listen, I don't have that opportunity right now. Check me back in a month or two. The, the 2020 paperwork, 2021, 2022, so astronomical, so crazy. I had to pay thousands of dollars to make sure it was good and cleared to go. But people who kept a business from 20, again, I told you about the credit, the employee W-2 credit, where it's 25K. It's basically a grant. You don't have to pay it back. 25,000 per employee that you kept from 2019 to 2021. Do you know how many plumbers, welders, roofers, Real estate companies are about to make a crazy amount of bank off those W-2 employees they kept on. Crazy. They're throwing money out the window right now for business owners. But again, who are they throwing it out for? They're not throwing it out for John and Sue, average person. They're throwing it out for people who are going to have uh, future assets. So, Let me see what else y'all have, man. Oh, I mean, the, I mean, listen, crypto has a future. Um, if you see who's on the Fed Reserve chair, I'm not going to go too deep in this. They are also on the chair and board of XRP. So, and that's not like a hint or anything like that. Like XRP and some of these, like you have 18,000 cryptos right now. A lot of them are going to crash. They're going to go the way to Dodo Bird. But you do have some that are going to stick around because you have lobbying. You have uh money being pushed and you have people looking for like hey man i got five dollars and i want to be a part of the future so they buy these coins right but my biggest thing to you is what's your main bucket if your main bucket of income is a job or a business focus on making that main bucket as beautiful as and gigantic as you possibly can so that the spillover from the bucket goes into other things that's what I learned over this whole past three, four years is like, make that bucket so big that the spillover is ridiculous. The fact that my YouTube business is so strong and so big, I was able to save certain aspects of other companies I had from the money I made off YouTube. Now, was that the smarter thing? No. When I look back on it, I should have got certain type of loans. I should have got certain things. But hindsight's twenty twenty. Now that I know that I know, and, and at, like for the next 90 days, I told people to send my classes. Like I'm going, give me all the lines of credit, give me everything. I'm just going to, I'm just going to start developing the land. So then I, the banks have to give me the money, right? There's ways to play around this. Well, I hope it was helpful today. Y'all had so much in here, I can't see all of it. So um, this is mostly what I have for y'all today. I, I'm going to miss some of y'all comments, and I apologize. Um, let me see what else I got in here. Yeah, Butler, listen, there we all kind of people making money in this upcoming time. I missed somebody's super chat. Thank you, Tasha Tash, for the one and a super chat. Um, there was just so much you guys gave me here today. I really thank you for the super chats. If I missed any, I apologize. Um, I just, if I missed them, I apologize. Yeah, even in people pushing back, give me pushback on buying land. I've been saying buy land, buy land, buy land. Oh, Erica, no, you don't need to buy land. I'm like, okay. When I'm sitting here studying and telling you where it's moving. So, again, you guys, this is your girl, Erica Classy Climb Blog. Thank you so much for being here today. Again, if you want to understand some of the things I was talking about, you can go grab the funding, uh, $27 funding course, spring funding course. I go over a lot of business opportunities and funding and how you need to set your business up to be funded. 
Number two, we have Tech Tuesdays. We bring on countless uh, guests to help you get into the tech industry. Uh, Tam is one of them. She's in the chat and comments. Several folks. Um, number three is get real data. A lot of us stay all day, all night on internet. Get your ass out here and go see what, what's going on on this year. Because, you know, it tells a different story, right? Now, one dude said, well, hey, the data you're seeing out here is lagging. No, it's not. I love being in military towns. Because if it ain't the first and the 15, them folks is home because they don't have no money in their pocket. And that's just what's happening on a bigger scale <clears throat> out here, right? That's just what's happening on a bigger scale. So if you have a problem, you can't find some of the stuff I'm talking about. <laughs> that's funny right here. <laughs> that's funny. Um... The link for all my courses is www.classyclimbers.com. Also, it'll be in the description. It'll be tiered to the first one. But I want you guys to understand this. Like, they're building the economy for people who make a certain amount of income. They're going to be able to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Again, the Manhattan thing asking for 160000 they want particular type of people living there. <clears throat> and that's all there is to it. And you can't force them to change who they want living there. The same thing when it comes to banking. If a banker, if you find, first of all, I want the dude from the beginning of the show when I talked about it, the dude who sued, he needs to sue, first of all, because that's discrimination, right? But understand, that's how private money works. If you got a friend, and, and let's say it's his girlfriend, I hate to say it that way, and she can get approved for 120000 to give your business, figure out how to pay her 15 to 20% income for the next five years off that money. Let her loan you all that money and go do what you do with it. But if you take that funding course or you take the one-page business plan, you know how we need to set up your business so that you can have access to credit cards, other funding, <clears throat> and why credit is so important for certain people, certain groups, because we know how the funny business with the banks go. We already know how the funny business with the banks go. So if you got your own credit card or you have the land already, right, you have the land already, now you start making slight improvements on the land. They got to give you the money because it's already justified in the improvements and the things. So, <clears throat> sorry, I think I'm going down now. But again, this is just something I want you guys to understand. I want to really, really strongly talk about this. And I'll try to break this video up and get um, our editor to break it up some while I'm out here. But I want you to understand, like, they're, they're, moving, the, they're moving the chess pieces. And a lot of times people who just want to show up to work and goof off every weekend, there's still a place for you in our society. Don't get it twisted. We'll always need those people. Just like we'll need people who want to be a manager so bad that you can pay them less money as long as they have the title manager in their name. You know what I'm saying? Like there are people who are willing to take a cut as long as they have manager in their name or they're managing other people. I can tell you right now, acquisitions management. What is an acquisition management? <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. What is acquisitions management? I've seen guys take 60K a year to join somebody's real estate company where they're running around making the phone calls, making the deals, making the calls, and then they're working off, you know, commission and bonuses. At that rate, if I made, it's only going to make 60K a year, I would just work for myself, right? That If you're that wholesaler and you have the money to get the data and have a decent website, I would just pay some VAs to make the calls myself. But that's the thing people don't want to hear. They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to own a business. They'd rather work for somebody. So you got a guy who's bringing in millions of dollars to a company as an acquisitions manager. And they're paying them 50 and 60K a year as standard. Go look this up. Don't take my word for it. I want you to spend today going on Indeed.com and look at the price points. Go on Glassdoor.com and look at the price points of what they're paying people. Look at that. Again, they're hiring everywhere. So again, I just want you to understand this. This is something y'all got to be aware of. You know, I'll do a state of the union kind of webinar maybe in like two weeks, but I. Uh, I'm more stuff. Like, the change is here. The change is here. It depends on where you want to fit in the next couple years in this change is how your life is going to look. People really don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. That's the truth. So, again, uh, I wish you all well. I wish you all safety. I hope you guys make all the money you want. And I hope you get your vacations in because these towns are packed full of people on vacation. All right? There are some hotels going under. There are some places that, that are closed for food because they've been closed since the pandemic. But a lot of these places, people are out here. People are going to make their budget 
a part of their family history, a part of their summers, a part of their life is going on these vacations and going on these trips. They make it a part of their life. Right. So hope this was helpful. Anyways, you guys hit the like button. I appreciate you guys for coming here today. This is your girl, Erica, Classic Climb Blog. Later.